What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the live stream. And uh, tonight, at least for the first little bit of this, I have a face cam on uh, because we haven't done that in a little bit. Uh, but it'll be maybe for the first 10, 15 minutes or so. And then I've got a whole bunch of, you can't see them yet. yet. You can't see them yet. I got a whole bunch of really cool knives laid out. A couple of things you've already seen, but a, a couple of things you guys haven't seen yet. We're going to talk about that stuff. Um, Part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because there's some, sorry, hello everybody, uh, let's see here, <laughs> Andrew Arnold, does the picture mean you're going to dye it yellow and make it go super, <laughs> I was really concerned that uh, it would be more blonde, and I was also concerned that it wouldn't grow in in the middle because I had never done this before, um, so it, the way that it came in, it's, it's obviously lighter than the rest of my face, but I mean, it, it's fine. It's honestly, it's more annoying than anything else. Having a mustache is the most annoying thing in a, in a man's life, right? <laughs> I mean, if you if you can grow it, that okay, then then great. It's still annoying. It's still like a just a, a really hairy dog just sleeping on your face all the time that collects debris from whatever it is you're eating right and you can always you can always smell like some like i always have the urge to go wash my face all the time five times a day anyways let's see here um i'm like the camera's here the laptop's down here so i'm constantly looking away because that's where I'm, I'm looking at your questions um let's see here not used to seeing my face yeah <laughs> i don't show i don't put my face on youtube all the time but i i am tonight just for a little bit Ah, uh, watch size if I have a good live stream. Hey, thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. Thanks for donation. Um, let's see here. Can I make it into a classy handlebar mustache? No. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Absolutely not. Um, having a beard for 30 years, I can only disagree. Therapeutic Edge. Check out a Therapeutic Edge on uh, YouTube. Maybe having it longer, I would change my mind. But it's just itchy and like... Oh man, it's even like right now, I am always aware of my mustache. I am constantly aware that there is a a small push broom on my face all the time. It's hard to think about anything else but the fact that there is a mustache on my face. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but anyways, part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because something that I really want to learn how to do... And I've actually asked Everyday City Carry about this multiple times, and I've brought it up before. I want to be able to have my face here or here in this these regions of the live stream, and I want to be able to be showing the knives at the same time. Uh, there's a way to do that, whether it's OBS or Bandicam or whatever, right? There's some service that I can probably pay for and make that all work. I needed to get a camera, get a better mic, right? Uh, I want to be able to do that, and I also want to be able to do that for unboxing, so that you guys are able to see, you know, not not only just hear my voice and hear my reactions. I want you guys to be able to to see me too. I get really animated, and it's not. I always joke about how much I move around during uh, videos and how much I wave my hands around, and I would like I do it automatically, and uh, uh, you can hear it like in the audio. You can hear me going backwards and forwards all the time. And I, I figured it'd act, add an extra element of entertainment for you guys if you could see me, you know, in a small corner of the screen at the same time. So um, I think that's that's going to be in the future. I can't. I don't know if it's going to happen in the next month or it'll be a couple of months. I don't know. I, sometimes I'm slow with stuff like that. But that, yeah, that's the idea: is to be able to do that for live streams and for some videos, not reviews, but like unboxings and stuff like that for sure. Um, let's see here. I know, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I um, like it. Like when I say this, I don't mean like I know, I know. Chris Pratt, uh, right? And I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying for so long, and then then I I grew my facial hair out, and now it's more like I I, I get it I get it often. Thank you. <laughs> let's see here. Um, let's see here. What's up, Scott Simmons? What's up, Stacy? 
uh, Dominic Romero, what's going on? Women Carry Knives, what's going on? Whole bunch of people I recognize in here tonight. This is awesome. Yeah, here in just a few minutes, I'm going to switch the camera back around um, so we can look at some knives. But we just hadn't done this in forever, and I wanted to show off my sweet, sweet mustache. <laughs> I just am not, not going to be a mustache person. Um, I had a joke about it because, like... For the longest time, I just had the beard, and it was okay for a little bit, right? But the bigger that it got, the fact that there wasn't a mustache, it got weird. And my wife, finally, it wasn't you guys, it was my wife. She was like, it looks weird. You have to, you have to try to grow a mustache. It's so weird. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, uh, I buckled, I hunkered down, and I grew one. <laughs> what do I think of dagger knives? I think they're awesome. You get two edges, right? Generally, the cutting geometry is not as good, right? Because you have the, the flat is right down the middle. And unless it's an ultra-wide dagger, you know, with a super deep hollow grind, you're not going to have that, you know, thinness behind the edge. Not, not that it needs it necessarily, right? You can have general, you know, medium robustness behind the edge on a dagger, and it's just fine. I, I like them, you know, especially on OTFs. I think uh, an OTF dagger is one of the most utilitarian designs out there. You can't brace your thumb on the back of it to do some of that detail work, but uh, yeah, I love OTF daggers for sure. Uh, Corey Wayne, thanks for review reviews. I love my Dirac and Shaman. That's cool, man. Thanks for watching. I'm glad that you like those. Those are two of my favorite knives for sure. Nice hair. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much always wear a hat. The only time that I'm not wearing a hat is if I'm asleep. And sometimes even when I'm asleep. Well, but my, you mean my actual, like what you can see here? Yeah, I need a haircut really bad. Like, I got the, I got some Camaro hair going on. <laughs> out, hanging out of the back, for sure. Way too much. Uh, let's see here. No, Drew. I just copied him. I kept looking at Mike and I was like, he looks so good with all that facial hair. I'll just have to copy my younger brother again. <laughs> uh, Marky Mark, yeah. It's either Marky Mark or Chris Pratt. Those are the two most. Every now and then, somebody throws a uh, somebody throws a John Cena at me. It's one time I got Patrick Swayze. <laughs> oh my God! And uh, the guy from um, the funniest one is uh, the guy from um, Workaholics, the short guy. Adam Devine, uh, is it Adam Devine? Yeah, somebody said, <laughs> somebody said Adam Devine one time. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, let's see here. WFlow77. We talked Tinder and Ives and IG a bit. Still got to pull the trigger once my paycheck comes in. Hey, do the right thing with your paycheck first. And then if you've got, you've got plenty left over then yeah for sure hinder knives it's a good it's a it's a good knife to spend a lot of money on for sure ed i don't understand your question you must feel like a god yeah in front of 83 people <laughs> is that directed at me you mean because i have a beard like a godlike beard is that what you mean in that case yes <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hey, Floridian214, what's going on? Owen Allen, thank you very much. I'm sure that you are too. I'm sure that you're all gorgeous gods. I'm sure that you are. Blame Dexter, what's going on, man? Uh, what's your favorite Medford? Thinking about getting one. I mean, the Praetorian. The Praetorian's my favorite Medford. Um, I almost ruined something. <laughs> You'll have to wait till Monday. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, he says he misses his hair. I'm not going to say I have all of my hair. I'm not going to say I have all of it, right? You can see what's kind of matted down up here. Eh, yeah. He gets it. My hair's long right now. Like I still have, you know, a, a like a there's a hairline there, right? But like, is am I losing my hair? I mean, like a little bit, 
You guys have probably never seen my hairline. There you go. That's what that's what my hair looks like under my hat right now. So there you go. I am um, not overly concerned with my uh, presentation. <laughs> no, I'm not much for, um, what is the word? It's not glam. I'm not much for, uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. The, the me that you get on camera, right? This is the same me that you're seeing when I'm not record or when I'm, when the camera's not on my face. There's no reason to me for me to wear any like if you if, if you guys ever meet me at Blade Show, it's likely I'll be wearing a plain t-shirt with nothing on it. You guys can see. Nothing on my t-shirt at there'll be no logos or anything like that. Nothing on my t-shirt. And I'll be wearing regular jeans. <laughs> and I'll probably be wearing a baseball cap. I don't that's just, you know, it's not my thing to look to look super presentable. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, no, no, no. So I'm reading through you guys' comments because I haven't been paying attention. I've been talking directly into the camera. <laughs> it's not a virtual render of your face. <laughs> uh. Oh, thanks, Michael Morgan. Not so much after Thanksgiving. I got some taters and gravy to work off <laughs> uh let's see uh beard to hair ratio <laughs> more in favor of the beard well as i started to lose my hair a little bit up here like my my hair still comes to this point right here and then it starts to come back um and i generally keep it really short but as i as i lost it in the in the power alleys right um, it just started growing out of my face thicker. <laughs> How many people watching this from the porcelain throne? I would say 30% at any given moment. 30% of you at any, at any one moment. Sorry, my, now that I raised my hat up, my head got itchy. You just sh show off the, show off the sweet power alleys. Look at that. Yeah, that's a, that's a gorgeous 33 year old power alley right there. Yeah, that dishwater hair, tint of red. If you're not 33, just know one day you'll you'll you could be like me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's your real name? Cuz you look like a Chad. My real name is Richard, but I don't go by Richard. You can call me Dick. That's seriously, I, I honestly do. You have, if your name's Richard, you have to accept that in middle school. So I've been going by Dick for, I don't know, since I was 13, 14, something like that. Um, let's see here. Where am I from? I'm from Kansas. Still in Kansas. Uh, <laughs> wait till you're 50. I honestly, I'll probably just buzz my, I'll, I'll probably buzz it. If I, I mean, like, if my, if my hair really starts to thin, I don't need it. I'll just buzz it. I'm fine with that. I like wearing hats. I've been wearing hats forever, so I just, that's probably what I'll do. Right now, my, my favorite hat right now is this Ram hat. My, I, once I started, once I bought the truck, I had to, because my old hat said Dodge. It was one of my old, hat. and my brother was like, we don't drive a Dodge. You drive a Ram, you know. And because the, the other vehicle was the, the Durango, which is a Dodge. And so I was like, oh, I need a Ram hat, you know? So we got this one, and this is the only one that I've been wearing out of all. I lost my Benchmade hat at the lake in Texas. It just blew off my head on a pontoon boat and sunk to the bottom of the lake like it was made out of 3V. Need to check on that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So I'm reading through your stuff. Oh, Swig, Shank Shack, what's up, buddy? How are you? Thanks for the donation, man. Appreciate that. If only, if only I could have the hair, the stash, and the beard of this. You want to talk about a shining golden god that has fantastic ratios in all of those departments? Oh, our Swig, man. 
That guy's got it going on. <laughs> Do I like to fish and hunt? I mean, I live in Kansas, so I've done that, but I'm not like a I'm not like a regular you know, we used to fish a lot. We used to do that all the time. Hunting, eh, I, not so much. I've done it. I don't have a problem with it. It just wasn't part of my, like, we grew up with, like, my dad had a couple of firearms, and we grew up with neighbors and friends who, you know, would shoot trap or whatever, and we uh, periodically would go hunting, and so it was around us all the time. It just wasn't a part of all, like, my family didn't do it all the time, right? Fishing a lot more often, not so much lately. I'm hoping to get out and do it more, specifically fishing um, with my son and my daughter as they get a little bit older. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, if Ian is gun Jesus, maybe you can be knife Jesus. I don't know if I want to accept that title. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I had a frost cutlery knife, and the stop pin flew off when flipping. Now I have a bootleg one handled, uh, one handled ballast on. Yeah, that sounds like frost cutlery. Sorry. <laughs> Swig says, I remember the days when you just reviewed cheap knives. You're all highfalutin now. <laughs> I still, hey, I still review some uh, budget knives. I, I like to, I'm, I mix it up, right? When we turn this camera around, I got a whole bunch of stuff for you. Are you guys, hi, let me, let me read the room right now. You guys want, you want me to keep the camera like this? You guys want to look at knives. At some point, you're going to get sick of my face. So it's either now or in a little bit. You can't hurt my feelings. I don't have feelings, right? It's, I, it's all synthetic, right? I'm, I'm just, I'm a YouTube robot. I'm not saying I'm tough, I just don't have feelings. <laughs> I do have a glass ego, right? How does that work if you don't have feelings? Figure it out. It's not for me to figure out, it's for you to figure out. Knives. Oh, oh, oh that's what that's called, a sociopath. There you go. <laughs> Knives over face. Yeah, I figured. Oh, no. My feelings. Just kidding. Yeah, it's time to look at knives. There you go, mustache. Now you can. Now everybody knows MC is capable of growing a mustache. Hang on. Whoop. Hang on. Hang on. We're doing this old school. Uh, camera flip. There we go. It's a <laughs> voice command camera. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't find the button, and once I found it, I felt like I had to say out loud what I was doing. All right, let's get these all situated. Yeah, what do we got here? Beautiful. Very cool stuff out on the table. How's the camera? Is it straight? No, it isn't. It's not level. Hang on, I got to get it level so you guys, we don't have a ramp on off one side. Uh, Duke Dank, thanks so much for the donation. I appreciate that. Okay. <clears throat> Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Alrighty. Um, let me get back to stream here. What's the one with the blue pivot? Um, this is a, uh, oh, it's a skiff. Um, it says on the inside. Yeah, culprit. Skip, uh, skiff culprit. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is a custom knife. I am very unfamiliar with this maker, but my goodness, is it beautiful. And my goodness, is it well made. Captain America style pivot. <laughs> That's what everybody said on Instagram. I kind of agree. Very cool. This was actually sent to me by LaVon of the Knife Nuts podcast, along with a few other things. And I'm glad that he did, because I otherwise would not have experienced it. Um... I'm guessing he sent it to me because he liked it. Uh, because there's a lot here that's just excellent. I mean, seriously, there's a lot here that's excellent. I can't wait to talk about that one, but that's one that's going to require a little bit more research. So, yeah. I honestly don't know what they run, guys. I have no idea what that skiff runs. It could be 500 bucks. It could be 900 bucks. I honestly don't know. I'm going to guess... <laughs> I'm going to guess it's, it's expensive. 
Um, it feels extremely expensive. Looks like a, a hand rub satin finish. The pivot's custom, right? We've got 3D milling going on on the, like really intricate, really detailed 3D milling going on in the frame. Um, the uh, uh, bearings feel like ceramic. Um, we've got a uh, like extra sculpting on the backspacer, really beautiful anodizing, right? There's just a lot of extra elements that are indicative of a higher price point. So, uh, the blue one is not a Hogue. This is the uh, Knife Joker Collector Edition Riot K2. Um, also, a very expensive knife. Also, a very, very incredible knife. Sorry, mostly what I have out on the table, despite... My argument with Arswig about me reviewing and showing cheap knives. <laughs> Most of this stuff is really expensive tonight. Um, the new Lightning, uh, the new Lightning Elite is uh, thirty-five bucks. So <laughs> there you go. Next, le next uh, least expensive is the new um, uh, Concept Assipiter, or I hope it's pronounced that way. God, this thing is awesome, guys. Crown spine, front flipper. Marbled carbon fiber, or it looks like that. It's actually, it actually looks kind of interesting. I'm not sure exactly what we call this carbon fiber, but it's nice. Um, and then titanium and S35VN running on bearings, beautiful. Uh, those are about 200, and then everything else is quite a ways above 200. Um, best detent on the table. Yeah, it's a skiff. Yeah, for sure. Best detent for sure. Riot's close. So is the XM18. So is the uh, uh, the um, uh, Arcane Designs Dark Matter um, because this is also made by Riot, right? This guy, the Dark Matter feels a lot like, uh, or wait, not the Dark Matter, the Antimatter. Jeez, I'm stupid. The the Riot uh, K2 and the Antimatter feel very similar, but they're both Riot. So anything under 100 bucks? Yeah, the Lightning. Lightning's uh, 35 bucks. Um, let's see here. It's over 9,000! And he crushes the scouter. I will never forget that. I know somebody's like, actually, in the original Japanese version, it's over 8,000. Thanks. We know. If you watched, if you watched DBZ, you probably know that. But thanks. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Dark matter would be a cool one. I mean, dark matter, antimatter. I don't. I don't study like quantum physics and whatever the mysterious force is that's pulling the universe apart. But it's a it's a reference to that. Antimatter, dark matter, dark energy. I don't know. It's all in the same territory, right? So I think antimatter sounds cool. I think dark matter sounds cool. At all. I mean, dude, like the whole his whole style, his whole theme is cool. It's not happening. I mean, like, that theme doesn't really exist anywhere else in the knife world. And also, this style, like, his look is very unique, too. It's going to come to, like, if he keeps making more models, it's going to be really easy to pick out an arcane design knife amidst a lot of other knives that are out there, right? Thoughts on the Benchmade Anthem? I have one coming this week. It's freaking ridiculously expensive. But it is an integral. And the coil spring... Uh, axis lock is way better than any other axis lock utilizing Omega Springs. That axis lock will likely last forever. And if it breaks, well, then you can just pull a pen apart and use the coil spring in a pen, right? Similarly, I mean, I've heard you can do that with like the Manix too. Um, so yeah, I think that's, uh, I think the lock is a way better design. Honestly, it's a fantastic little knife. I say little, not really little. Crown spine, right? Good EDC style blade shape. Great texturing. The stock pocket clip is freaking weird. That's my biggest gripe with that knife. That and the price. But again, it's a it's a U.S. integral, integral, whatever. So yeah, it's expensive. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It got a good review on my uh, on my channel. Um, best knife around 150. Say it with me, folks. Say it with me. The Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2 is still IMO. Probably the best knife you can get around. I mean, like, if you really care, here's the thing. If you really care about the whole U.S. made thing, this is super smooth. M390, contoured texture G10, 
the able lock, which seems to function infinitely better than the axis lock. Fantastic cutting geometry. This is such an awesome knife. Perfect pocket clip, right? Very few flaws with this guy. Absolutely a wonderful, wonderful knife. A lot of people, I think, will agree, but there's a lot of stuff out there. I've been saying the same thing about the Ritter Hogue for, gosh, like a year and a half. I've been saying the same thing for so long. Oh, there's 139 people in here. If any of you are curious about the little helmet icons besides some of the uh, people's names here in the chat, those are my Knights of the Round. They've joined my membership program. If you'd like to join the membership program and gain access to those badges, the helmets will actually change color the longer you've been a member, and they'll show up in chat for everybody to see as well as uh, you know, in my uh, comment section on my channel under regular videos. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, you can actually open up the description of the live stream you're watching right now and click on the very first link, which will take you to my membership page. You'll also gain access to the Excalibur emojis that my loyal knights are showing off in the chat right now. Swords from popular video games, popular movies, stuff like that. Uh, we have a good time with it. Um, and it uh, directly supports the channel, so I'd appreciate it. It's not expensive at all, but that's just something that I, I plug in every single live stream. So there we go. We did it. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, it'll actually populate, it'll show for everybody and we all, hail, you know, it's fun. Anyways, let's see. The Guardian Tactical 40. Let's talk about this freaking monster. This has got to be the most satisfying to deploy OTF. Like, li listen, right? The, the Lightning Elite, it's, it's cool, right? It, it's cool. Nothing, it's nothing compared to this. This is, this is crazy. This is, if you have never, as anybody who's never fired an OTF, there's at least one person in here who's never fired an OTF. If you've never fired one and you see him in movies, you see him on YouTube, people playing with him, right? And you, you imagine what this feels like, right? This is going to be underwhelming to whatever it is you're imagining. The Recon 40 is going to be equal to or better than whatever movie fantasy you have about OTFs. That thing is a masterpiece. It is a crispy, crispy masterpiece. I love it. Sorry, Lightning. I actually took you off camera there. Um, Guardian Tactical or Microtech. I mean, here's the thing. Microtech for the design. For, the desi for like design and aesthetics, Microtech all the way. Guardian Tactical is kind of vanilla, right? They're like vanilla, they're like military vanilla. And that's fine. Microtech has a way better aesthetic. Functionally, I mean, in terms of durability and like, you know, quality, they're, they're the same. Um, but like, how easy is it to actuate, right? If we're going to talk about the quality of the firing switch, Guardian Tactical. That, that bearing switch is, there's nothing else like it out there. It's amazing. This thing is so easy to actuate. Nothing. So easy. The switch is awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the drop point blade on it is fantastic. It's pretty thick behind the edge, but that's okay. I kind of like it. It's like 145 to 150 thousandths. That is a thick blade on an OTM. That's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Am I into slip joints? If so, what is your favorite? Yes, but I'm very picky. I like the Great Eastern Cutlery number 15s. I like all the different Gek 15s. I think they're beautiful. I also like the Benchmade proper. Um, I like the, uh, what is it? The Civivi, is it the Civivi Gent? Is that what it is? Like for a budget one? I can't remember what that one is. I don't know. I don't. I don't have nearly as long a list as I would with like a locking knife, right? But yeah, the Great Eastern Cutlery number. Yeah, the rustic gent. There you go. The Great Eastern Cutlery number fifteen. I've actually paid over two hundred dollars for one of those. <laughs> Honestly, um, that was uh, not the proudest moment in my life, but I was happy with that that night. Uh, I've actually never handled this, the hinder slippy. It is the one hinderer that I have yet to handle. Um, so I'll have to show that on the channel at some point. Who's asking if I like Chinese knives? Yeah, sure. There are Chinese knives that I like. People get real, you know, bent out of shape one way or the other. This is a knife channel. 
Uh, I'm going to tell you guys what I think about the knife. Um, there's not going to be any sort of political stance or me, you know, completely disregarding something because of its geographic origins of manufacturing. <laughs> it's either good or it isn't good or it's somewhere in between, right? Um, but yeah, if I wasn't like that, I, I would be, you, you, you wouldn't be able to trust my opinion, right? You'd be questioning my opinion. Why is he disregarding this? Why is he ignoring this, right? No, yeah, I'm always going to be honest. So, yeah, there are, there are knives that are manufactured in China that I like. There's knives that are manufactured in Japan that I like, Taiwan, Germany, Italy, right? Of course, the United States, Canada, all over the place. Quality comes from all over the place. But I do make the vast majority of my own personal purchases uh, with uh, knife makers and manufacturers that um, primarily make their knives out of the United States. I just do. Um, but I won't shy away from something that's really intriguing just because it isn't made in the United States. For example, Rayot knives or Riot knives. Yeah, I've made many purchases with Riot knives for sure. Oh, let's see here. That's too bad, Keep Out 7811, because you're missing out on a lot. If I'm being honest with you, Riot knives, um, like, let's let's take your high-end, you know, production American knife brands, ZT, Spyderco, Benchmade, all great. None of them are as good as what Riot's putting out. <laughs> they're just not. Riot puts out a better quality product, but they're also more expensive, right? So, you know, your quality still takes form in that area. It can be hard to spend more money, which is probably what he meant. It's hard to spend more money, right, um, once it gets to that point. But there's a lot of quality to be found, you know, above, above 70 bucks for sure. Matt G, that's the Riot K2 Knife Joker Edition. That's the Collector Knife Joker Edition. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, Quack Fam. Um, they do make a lot of Hinder-esque knives. Uh, the Epoch and the Torrent, uh, specifically. Very much. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I agree. The Occipiter is good, but it's nowhere near uh, uh, 520. 520 is oh, legendary. Um, let's see here. Nice, James Moore. Just ordered the Riot Made Micro Evo Typhoon from Sharp by Design. The uh, the Evo Typhoon is one of my very. It's one of the very best knives that has ever come across my table. Whether you go with a full size, you go with a micro. Oh God, oh God! I was so happy to finally handle one. I cannot wait for my new one to come in. It is just excellent. Yeah, more people do need to like. Oh, we have 69 likes. No, wait, don't, th nobody like. Nobody, damn it. <laughs> damn it. The one time I didn't want anybody to like. <laughs> you could have all just disliked it. Oh, man. All right, you might as well now. 155 of you and only 72 likes. What's, what's going on? What's, do you guys not, you guys don't care about my ego? Ugh, same joke for six months. Or it's been more than that, right? Whatever. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I like the Morpheus and Strider MSG3? I do. The one that I had had very disappointing action. Um, and it wasn't the first Morpheus Custom that had that kind of lumpy action. But the rest of the, the, the design is incredible. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Just killing time. You were the 70th. You were the one who ruined it for everybody, huh? <laughs> um, let's see. Been picking up knives with different locks lately. 8015, Bucked Marksman, Inferno, etc. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you need to get you a shark lock for sure. Uh, De Demko is the mad scientist behind this stuff. Um, this thing is the coolest, right? I mean, as far as like, um, strength, I don't know. I'm really curious to find out like what the difference is between in strength between this and like the deadbolt and the triad lock and all not that I am actually gonna use it hard enough to for that to matter because unless you are the Hulk or Dr. Manhattan, you're not gonna be able to apply enough force to the lock to really test it. But it, it's interesting, right? But it has that fidget factor. It's way easier to manipulate than something like a tried lock. And honestly, I find it easier to manipulate than 
pretty much anything other than the compression lock. The compression lock is about as simple to manipulate, but man, it's good. Um, oh, Slice is in here. I must ask you a question. All right. I, I haven't, I will try to answer. That was a terrible, I have no, I don't have a pun. Sorry. <laughs> What's up, man? Um, Demko said in the interview that I did with him that there's no reason it shouldn't be as strong as the triad or something like that. Oh, cool. Well, there we go. From the man himself who invented, I'm sure Colts Hill fans will still argue. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> it can be Demko himself and Colts Hill fans. Will be like, oh, hold the horses. Hold your horses. Now, wait a second. No, no, there's no way. <laughs> That's cool to hear. Very cool. I need to go watch that. I haven't watched that yet, so I said, I'll have to go watch that and listen. Um, he, he seems like an awesome guy and so does his brother. I watched a bunch of other, like leading up to my, you know, I binged a bunch of stuff on YouTube, like leading up to the arrival of this thing. And, uh, they seem like awesome people. So that's cool. Um, Hey, Hey, yeah. by the way, what, what reading? Sorry. Sorry. I was like reading back through everybody's comment. Uh, in Demko's interview with Knife Junkie, he said the thicker the blade stock of a knife on his designs, the stronger they'll be. I mean, in, in a lot of you know, I, that makes sense. Like if if the um, if the um, locking system is meant to not accommodate but um, complement the geometry of the blade, then up to whatever the ratio of the, the maximum strength of thickness of blade would be to the maximum strength of, or the maximum durability of the lock, whatever that is, then yeah, I would imagine that the thicker the blade up to a certain point would actually just complement the lock. Does that make sense? Or did I just say a bunch of nouns and adjectives and spit all over the place like I usually do? Um, yeah, that makes sense. So cool. You obviously, you know, given the limited space, the thicker the blade, the worse off the cutting geometry is going to be unless you change the grind. So there's a teeter-totter there, right? But that's cool. I guess that makes sense. Uh, oh, you got a Malibu? Yeah, good luck trying to stop fidgeting with that thing. You'll never be able to do it. Uh, that's on that's on my list for, you know, best knives of 2020 by a long shot, for sure. Hey, good night. Seems lo logical. Thanks for stopping in. Um... Uh, what brand is equivalent to CRK in build and glassiness? Um, I would say, um, uh, uh, Slice is going to have to help me out with this. Uh, he has one. Uh, the one with the, the cryo treats, the S45, it, well, the new, they just did S45VN, they used to cryo treat S35VN. They're like Hinderer and Chris Reeve mixed together. Um, God dang it. Slicey, what is that brand? I, I know, it's on the tip of my tongue. Spartan, Jesus, yeah, Spartan, uh, Spartan Harzi for sure. If it, it's more robust uh, and and more hindery, but it's it, seriously Spartan Harzi. The Spartan Harzi is uh, a lot like what happens when you mix the XM18 with a Chris Reeve knife. Uh, it's like, I it's to me it's like um, the full size Nkosi meets the Hinder XM18 three and a half inch. Uh, anybody else agree? That's it's like if those two came together, and you know, they had to have a baby. That's the baby. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Also got an ABW Model One V5. What an amazing knife! I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. Did you pick any anything from Henry's Black Friday drop? No, because I blew a bunch of money on. Uh, on something else, I was gonna ha I was gonna reveal it today, and because I put that thing in a community post, like, hey, I bought something, any and it from DLT. First person to guess what it is uh, will win, and nobody guessed right. Out of there were like a hundred and somewhere between a hundred and hundred twenty people, nobody guessed. Nobody guessed right, um, and uh, I I'm still waiting for somebody to guess, but it'll be in on Monday, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. Slicey's not allowed to answer because Slicey knows. Uh, oh, you, you guys can guess all you want. I'm not going to tell you whether you're right or wrong. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna ignore the. I'm just gonna ignore the the guesses. But you you can you can drop your guesses in that community post if you want to win a sticker pack. Uh, let's see. I buy to keep and use. Uh, I was gonna get beat up eventually, so now it's out of the way. I really. Get oh, did you drop something? Uh, oh, it's a, then never mind, Slicey. I was talking about giraffes and cotton candy, and uh, the first time I tried to do a cartwheel, I fell in a lake. That was, It wasn't anything important. Um, let's see here. Love to have a knife sharpening. Uh, you want me to recommend knife sharpening? I mean, I use a KME. KME with a base is going to run you anywhere from 250 to 300 bucks, but it's money well spent. Absolutely. Spend, uh, buy the uh, 50 grit and the 100 grit um, and uh, up to the 1500 grit stones. It's amazing. Uh, spend, yeah, spend some money on it. You know, if you, if you end up paying between three and 350 bucks total for all of the uh, equipment on the stones, oh my God. That thing just does it for you. It's so easy. I didn't know anything and I was just, you know, like an ape with some, you know, <laughs> some guided rods. And it, it just worked really well. It was it was awesome. I watched a couple of tutorials online, gave it a shot. I did some of my first sharpening ever on the channel and just went after it. Got some good feedback. Did it a couple more times. Got some more good feedback, and I just learned as I went along. I'm not. I'm still a novice, but yeah, it was fun to learn, and it's easy. Um, giraffes are my favorite animal. If that story was that a giraffe knocked you into a lake while you were doing a cartwheel as a child. I'll get a giraffe tattoo. Yes, that is exactly what I was talking about. So yes, you do have to get that tattoo. I recommend on your face. <laughs> that would that does sound like a cool story, but no, that wasn't it wasn't what I was talking about. Um did I came in the scalpel? Yes, I did. Uh a giraffe teardrop tattoo. <laughs> uh, let's see here. The new workshop is insanely good for 60 bucks. That's cool. I didn't know they did a $60. Hmm. I've only ever had one sharpening system. Well, no. I did have a Lansky for a little bit. And that was a little bit more difficult. Getting the angle right and getting everything correct. And I didn't have diamond stones. So everything seemed to take like way too long. Um, oh, here, I wanted to share with you guys. So this is not a new knife, but I found that I really like it. This is the Liang Ma uh, Field Duty. Look at the lines on this bad boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's like a bigger, not necessarily more robust, but it's a bigger, longer shaman. It's been around for a bit. Saw some information on this, you know, from 2019. Nice fall shot action. Got that big opening hole. It's really, oh man, it's really good. Lots of room right here to choke up on the blade. Very thin behind the edge. This is another great, I've handled a lot of Leong Ma designs here lately, and I'm just really impressed. Very cool. Uh, and then the only one we haven't shown is, and I know this is long gone, but Kyle offered to send it to me, and I just had to look at it. CPM 4V St. Nick's exclusive uh, Spider Coat Shaman. I think in my, this is one of the coolest shamans that's ever come out. CPM 4V, if I'm not mistaken, has even better toughness than 3V, and maybe the same or potentially better edge retention. I'm not sure about that. But I think it's actually less stain resistant than um, 3V. Uh, let's see here. Thoughts on the skiff on a drifter for a while. Same level as old. Uh, the skiff is amazing. It's the first time I've ever experienced anything from him. It's, it's incredible. It's a really, really nice knife. I need to learn more about it, though. I'm hesitant to say what I think it costs. Because once you get to this, once we're talking about this tier... It's, it's hard to say. Like, I'd love to tell you guys I can pick stuff up and be like, that's exactly $774, you know. I can't do that. It's hard to say. 
It could be anywhere from $500 to $1,000 would be my guess because there's a lot of intricate machine work in there. I don't know the country of origin. I don't know any of that. I'm sure you guys will all tell me. I'm sure somebody will just tell me 700 Okay, so it's right there in the middle, right? Whatever I guessed earlier was somewhere near that. I think I said, you know, something like 600 to 800 or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making that up. But, yeah, it's hard to say. Oh, he's American. Okay, there you go. Cool. Shaman clone? The Leong Ma? No. <laughs> Definitely not a Shaman clone. Those lines are very common in the knife world. You know why? Because humans all have relatively the same hand. And when it comes to a, a working tool, we like to put our hands in relatively the same types of places when it comes to knives, right? So you find that a lot of ergonomic lines are similar between different types of knives, right? Yeah. Um, 4V has less toughness than 3V, but more edge retention than 3V for, for comparison's sake. M4 is less toughness than 4V, and 4V is less toughness than 3V. M4 is better edge retention than 4V, and 4V is better edge retention than, than 3V. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Um, Sean Brown, yeah, I pulled an MC and got a red horse Hellraiser yesterday and dropped it on the concrete today. I scuffed up the marble carbon fiber and chipped the Oh, hey, it's a user now. You're good. You, you can you can just have a few Gatorades and you then find a way around it, right? And then uh, you know you wake up, stretch, right? Go for a jog, lift some weights, come back, go. Right, let's use it, right? <laughs> I've, I've literally gotten over dropping a knife with that. I recommend that actually. Um, exactly that. <laughs> Gatorades, Gatorades. Gatorades. Uh, let's see. Favorite EDC knife is a VV Elementum. It's one of it's a fantastic EDC knife. That's a great choice. Um, if the non-flipper fullered spear was your favorite XM18 configuration, why'd you sell it? Because I always want new stuff, and I get bored sometimes with with the same stuff over and over and over again right um it's it is interesting though digging into my subconscious on that because it's like why do i still have the why do i still have the dark horse there must be something special about it that's different than the fullard spear maybe because it's a xm24 and it's got the dark stone wash on it i don't know i love the fullard spear but i just like discovering new xm18 three and a half inch models right it's actually less likely that I'll sell the workhorse because it's already been beaten on. Um, the next next on the chopping block will be the S45 VN Spanto. It's neat, but I knew I was going to sell it the day that I bought it, right? And I think somewhere deep in my mind, I knew that I'd eventually sell the Fullard Spear. Um, I just know that there's too much coming out, and I'm not super rich, so I have to sell stuff to buy stuff, right? Um, I could spend excess out of my paycheck but i don't i don't want to do that i, I really want to be careful about the night you know the channel has made it infinitely easier to acquire what i want i've said that many times but i still have this personal rule about if you want something you gotta let something go it just helps balance out the if i start spending money out of my paycheck to get whatever i want that's a that's a really that that's a, an aggressive wildfire waiting to happen i like having mental block blockades right i have i like having little safety things met, set up for myself uh so yeah uh jeffrey coomer why does this guy only have 34.5k subs i don't get hey thanks man that's cool how many subs do you guys think i should have <laughs> it's okay if you think it, i should have less subs than 34 but yeah throw a number at me tell me what you guys think i should be at Bolster my ego, right? Help me sleep tonight. 69,000, I like that. I like pointy and sensor. <laughs> Jeffrey Kimbera, 350K plus. Thank you. Very cool. Have all of mine. <laughs> one minute night reviews. Subscribe to one minute night reviews. 50K. Uh, I, 
Spicy says, I think you should have 500 less than me. <laughs> well, thanks to Slicey Dicey, people finally, you know, initially in the beginning started paying attention. So I will always owe a part of this to Slicey Dicey. At least 100K. Thank you. I plan on continuing um, the channel for however long. So, you know, if tomorrow it flattens out and I don't gain more than 10 subs a day and that's just how it is forever, then okay. I had a great run, but I'm still going to do, I'm still going to make content. I love making content. I like watching the numbers go up, but if they flattened out or they slowed down or if they even dropped, it wouldn't stop me from making content. You know, everybody likes to see growth, right? So, 30. 34.9 thousand subscribers, an extra 400. Thank you. Um, definitely a million. Wow, thanks. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but that's very flattering. Uh, let's see. Other knife reviewers you watch besides Slicey. Oh my God, I watch a ton. I watch Birdshot. I watch Jim Skelton. Uh, I still watch Nut and Fancy periodically. <laughs> I know people are probably like, what? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I definitely watch Nick Shabazz. I watch Cedric and Ada. I watch Advanced Knife Pro. I, li I like to go back and um, and watch. Actually, uh, a couple. I've watched a lot of Epic Snuggle Bunny stuff and a lot of Doctor Frunky stuff multiple times over. They got great re they got great uh, replay value on their content for sure. Nick Shabazz the same way. Some of those some of those guys. I don't know what it is about their voice. Uh, Frankie and Snuggle Bunny and Nick Shabazz have soothing voices. Yes, Nick Shabazz has a soothing voice to me. Even though he, I will always, I will always think that Nick Shabazz sounds exactly like Meowth from Pokemon. Exactly. <laughs> I just really think. <laughs> oh God, we're, we're certainly in a pickle here. You know, he, it just sounds exactly like Meowth to me. It's, it's just I'm imagining as a kid. Jesse and James going back and forth and, and Meowth like tossing some, you know, <laughs> fucking, uh, whoops, I just said the F word on a live stream, some ridiculous thing in there. Um, <laughs> it's just amazing. I said that one time on one of his live streams, so he knows that he, he, know, he's, he has heard me say that before, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way, right? It just, that, that was the connection that I initially made. I don't mean it as an insult at all. It's just, that's, that's where my brain goes when I hear him. But I just, I just like to listen to his voice. I like to watch his reviews. If he did the exact same reviews that he did and his, and his accent was different, I'd still feel like I was getting good information, but I would feel like I was missing out. I feel like, I'd feel like I wasn't getting, getting the full experience. Like I want that has, that's a part of it for me. I just really like it. So <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm sorry if I ruin that for people. <laughs> uh, did Gilbert Godfrey put you to sleep as a kid? <laughs> uh, anybody who watches AVGN. Angry video game nerd. Did you know Gilbert Godfrey did an episode with AVGN? If anybody watches him, the Angry Video Game Nerd, that was a hilarious episode. My favorite gas station knife. I don't know if I have a favorite gas station knife. Probably the Rainbow Mermaid, Her Majesty. <laughs> uh, let's see here. That M Tech button lock. The Z the the Z Hunter certainly is famous now. I wonder how many extra. <laughs> I wonder how many Z knives have been purchased. Like the how many Z Hunter knives have been purchased since Nick, like, cast the golden light on it. You know what I mean? I've been intrigued, periodically, and he sent me one, and I felt like I should do a giveaway. I wanted to keep it for myself forever. Right? I had a real... Like, now if I just go buy one, it doesn't mean anything. I had a Nick Shabazz Z Hunter for just a little bit. But when I did my... It was for my uh, quest for the ultimate uh, unboxing knife thing. And he sent one in and, and signed it. I think he knew that I would do a giveaway on it. 
Um, but yeah, I, I felt like I had to give it away because that was part of the rules of the thing. Any, any, whatever didn't get voted as the, the ultimate unboxing knife, I would do a giveaway on. Um, but uh, man, I wanted to keep that. I wanted to pretend like he didn't send any so I could just keep it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I bet he sold thousands of Z Hunters and they have no idea why that was. <laughs> I'm sure, like, what the heck? This one specific, you know, the green corn cob is doing great. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Probably got stock in the company at this point, yeah. Uh, um... Love to be the person filling that order. Do you have any? Do you own any wrench made knives, like the ones Nick gets on his terrible knife? Yeah, I actually sent him one of those. <laughs> I was the one who sent him uh, the Glam Reaper and the golden uh, the golden wrench knife. I was trying to do puns. Like you can go back and watch that live stream. I sent him a note and tried to do puns, like really bad ones. And I was like, oh, I've heard knives. People say the best knives are. You know, or the best, What? how did I put it? It was so dumb. It was like, oh, people always say the best knives are great tools. So I figured this one, this one was golden in that department. It was a golden wrench knife. Worst pun ever, right? And then I sent him a folding scythe, the one that he referred to as uh, the Glam Reaper. Or somebody in his, um, somebody in his uh, live stream comment section referred to as the Glam Reaper because it was a rainbow assisted scythe based on it was it was a clone of a custom um but yeah i actually did um that was me um let's see here hey Kiefer, what's up man do you know any oh, oh oops i would love to be oh no i already read that one my favorite front flipper i mean between the 520 and the the gareth bull um Oh my God, Sham the Shamwari. It's hard to say. Shamwari is cl a little cleaner, but I like the look of the F the Fif Twenty. It's really hard to say between those two. Oh, I love I love Kalashnikovs. That's why I bought this green one. I loved it so much I had to have a keeper. So my permanent Kalashnikov is this freaking toxic green. I just, I just thought this was cool. I couldn't decide. It was for the longest time. I couldn't decide if I wanted the blue one, the red one, or the green one. But I finally ended on the green. I just think it looks nice. I needed a Kal a Kalashnikov. I repurchased a whole bunch of knives that I loved uh, just to have them and to use as uh, comparison knives. Um, let's see. Monster Energy Green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what steel does the titanium shaman, shaman have? It's the standard S30V. It's a shaman I've had since I unboxed it however long ago. Ridiculously smooth now. Very, very smooth. Um, but yeah, S30V. Yeah, the CTS XHP Kalashnikovs were interesting. You could get those for like 60 or 70 bucks at one point. Um making that the least expensive like the ratio between like performance of steel and cost it's one of the best ever um am i out of uh gatorade no nope, there's there it is oh professor edc is in here guys make sure to go uh, subscribe to professor edc excellent content uh let's see here i want an ultratech Spaceballs yogurt OTF. What? <laughs> what? what? Uh, you mean like the one that's based on the Stormtrooper? <laughs> that was gross. Uh, favorite EDC steel video you said it was S35 VN. Is S45 VN surpassing you? I mean, I haven't really used it, to be honest. I've just, like... I, I understand, you know, what they were trying to do on paper. I think the most interesting part about S45VN is not that it's got slightly better edge retention than S35VN, right? Um, or is 
just as easy to sharpen as S35VN while having that slight increase in edge retention. I think the most interesting part is that the corrosion resistance uh, is approaching that of M390 or 20CV or 204P. That's pretty cool. That, with the other little minuscule things, is what makes S45VN so interesting. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Doing paperwork, so really only listening. If I run late on comments, got to pay for my knife habit. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That's okay. I don't like the blade shape on the Ujimbo. I mean, you know, it's a that's a polarizing blade shape. Warncliffs for the most part are just ugly. They're they're kind of the pugs of the knife world. They're ugly, but people like them, right? I think they're ugly, and I like them. Uh, so I, I understand. Let's see here. Headed to bed later, MC. All right, hey, we'll see you, man, mechanic. Vanex or S forty five VN. Um, Vanex Super Clean is going to have. It's hard to. Vanex Super Clean is going to have about the same or better edge retention over S forty five VN. Am I am I right in that? Obviously, it's impervious to corrosion. Essentially, um, Vanex thirty seven or Vanex Super Clean, um, and ease of sharpening is where i don't know is is it tougher than s45 vn is it easy to sharp i don't know it's hard to say it's it's weird um comparing those steels because i'm not really sure where i mean the if if vanex has the same edge retention um and it's would it would it be tougher because of the chromium <laughs> the chromium content would that make it tougher well, then Vanex would be a better choice. But it seems like the, the multi-directional teeter-totter is way too stacked on Vanex. That can't be right. I have to be wrong somewhere. So, I don't know. I don't know which... I mean, most people are going to say Vanex because people are like, Corrosion resistance! Immediately! Right? If you, if you work in or around salt water, then Vanex makes sense for you. If you live where I live... It really doesn't matter that much, right? There's a lot of other... I'll take a tool... I'll take a non-stainless tool steel out here in Kansas for sure. Give me that extra toughness and extra edge retention. Absolutely. Rex... Well, these aren't tool steels, but... Uh, but, uh, like... I'll, I'll, let me say this. Steels that have very high toughness and very high edge retention and the corrosion resistance is whatever. So Rex 45, K390, and Maximit absolutely give me those steels 100 percent. excuse me m4 i love those now that i know this maximum again excuse me it's one of the least stainless blades i've ever had in my life this thing's going on a consistent user for um well over a year no problem whatsoever i put i might oil this up once a month once every two months if i forget no problem um let's see here yeah, CPM 154 is still my favorite all-around steel, um, mainly because it's a lot easier to sharpen while still having a lot of the attributes that I prefer. Um, but yeah, it's good, you know. And if it it doesn't hold an edge forever, but it's so easy to strop up. It's just it's just a friendly steel. It's good. Um. Okay, Ed. Cool it. Uh, nobody cares. Shut up. Um. Thoughts on the Les George V, uh, the VECP or VCEP, VECP. Um, I love it. It's one of my favorite knives. Um, absolutely. Uh, the VECP is one of my favorite knives of all time, and I think the addition of the uh, flipper tab is like the best thing that could have possibly happened to it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to ignore uh, the chat right now. Obviously, everybody was thinking the same thing. So, yeah. Well, I don't know what that guy's deal was. Like, I, I kept seeing the freaking... Here. Um, let me see here. Boop! See you later, idiot. Um, don't, be, don't, don't be an idiot in my live streams. I promise. <laughs> I promise. I will uh, highlight you and 
make everyone hate you immediately. There's a great example of <laughs> what, what I tried to ignore him. I tried to, I was just like, oh my God, we've got a guy who's like, I'm going to toss in some political stuff here or there, you know, make it like, it was like started off as a joke. And then it was like, then it was kind of a troll. And then he started to push harder because nobody was paying attention. Right. So hilarious. Great use of your time. You know, like, it, I mean, at what point do you go, this is, I'm going to do this. Like, it'll be so funny to sit by myself and like make, you know, weird sort of like <laughs> weird jabs. At, well, who was the jab at? Right. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you guys think like me and I have no concern. Like, I'm really happy that you guys don't have. Like we're here to talk about knives and stuff that everybody likes, right? So there's no, we there aren't aren't generally people here starting dumpster fires. Um, but anyways, uh, what do you think is the lowest price knife that has the greatest quality? A lot, honestly, um, like your Civivi knives and. A lot of your uh, sub one hundred dollar Kershaw knives, I think, are like if we're going to talk non U.S. Civivi. If we're going to talk about U.S. Oh, god dang it! Uh, here we go. Hide you. Hey Ed, I have a uh, thing here where uh, it, it's called hide user on this channel. So it's clever that you came back, but now you're gone forever. <laughs> Jeez. Get the hint, Ed. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I just removed him thinking he would go away. <laughs> but he he came back to show, to to let us know that he was <laughs> his path was not to be altered. Well, I altered it. Um, but uh, anyways, what was I talking about? Non-US Civivi. If we're, if we're gonna talk U.S., then Kershaw. Excuse me. Yeah, Kershaw's U.S. line. Um, let's see here. Kershaw bare knuckle for twenty CV for ninety nine bucks. Yeah, it was, and even you know, for a little bit, it was eighty bucks. So, um, eighty bucks was like the best. It was incredible. Um, I do like the um. Right now, the QSP Parrot in S35VN is an incredible value. There's a little bit of wonkiness in mine on the grind lines, which is, okay, it doesn't really affect it in terms of, you know, cutting geometry. But, um, I mean, like, in terms of cutting performance, it doesn't really affect it. But I would have liked to see that. It's still one of the best value knives of 2020, the, Q the QSP Penguin. Holy crap, it's 107. Guys. We gotta go. <laughs> oh, here. Uh, let me let me tell you what I'm about to go watch. Right, I'm gonna risk uh, losing the attention of my entire audience. But I like being honest with you guys. I like telling you what shows I'm into. I watch watch a lot of crazy stuff. So forever, my wife. I don't know what it was, but for the longest time, I had this huge thing against the actress Zoe Deschanel. I did not like Zoe Deschanel. I did not like her like forcefully quirky like nature every movie she was in oh i'm so weird and quirky everything i do is so weird and quirky look at me i just i couldn't stand it it was like play it just be a different person you suck you know and so I, I just you know my my wife was watching this show called new girl and she was like you would like this i promise you'd like it it's got really witty humor and you know you like the office you parks and rec right and I was like, no, I can't because it's got Zoe Deschanel in it. And, oh, look at that. She's the same, right, horn-rimmed, glasses-wearing, quirky outfit. Per, you know, it's, it looks like the same thing. I just can't do it, right? Um, and I was just being a jerk about it. And we finally, finally sat down and watched it. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so it's really good. I... I, I am a 33-year-old man who lives in central Kansas who enjoys working outside and lifting weights and driving a Ram truck, right? Whatever cliche 
group you throw me in, it's probably not the same group of people you would assume would watch a show called New Girl. But keep in mind, I also watch the Great British Baking Show. So <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it, it's pretty good. It, honestly, I, I've laughed. Like every episode, I've laughed out loud. Really, It's, it's a hilarious show. Anybody else has, who has seen the show um, will probably be able to tell you uh, that uh, the, am I Schmidt? <laughs> I, don't think, I, think, I think I identify more with Nick in that show that, versus Schmidt. But, yeah, if you haven't watched it and you're looking for a new show that's funny, give it a shot because it's really funny. Um, I like it. And a lot of my preconceived ideas about, you know, modern cliches and, you know, like, ooh, trendy folks living in the city, right? I was like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do that. I can't do shows like that, right? Now, they, they like, you know, they're very aware. They, the writers are very aware of, you know, what type of people might be watching. And they kind of cater to everybody. I like that. Um, but anyways, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it. I think it's time for me to end the live stream. Um, I, uh, I enjoy this. This was fun. I'm glad you guys are on board for the mustache. I can't uh, promise you guys it's going to last much longer. I Honestly, I'm thinking just any day now I could shave all of this off my face. I'm getting sick of it. Or maybe I'll grow it down to the ground. I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, glad you guys like it. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this was fun. Um, trying to think of what's coming up. Tomorrow you're getting the battle. Uh, old Lightning OTF versus Lightning Elite. I also took it apart so you guys could see the internals. And uh, another interesting Knife Guy episode. And lots of new stuff coming to the channel, including my secret purchase that you'll all find out about on Monday. That's going to be pretty much it tonight. Hope you guys have an excellent rest of your evening and an excellent rest of your weekend. Bye.